when one thinks of Soviet cinema, the first name that naturally comes to mind is Eisenstein. What is it about Eisenstein that fascinates you or um, inspires you? For me, the most inspiring thing was the combination that he's so like, intelligent and so knowledgeable. And he spoke five languages. I think he knew more languages than that. And then, at the same time, this is also how Peter wrote him, like, but then sometimes very sensitive and in a way like childlike. And this combination of these two like opposites was the most inspiring thing. His films are synonymous with the movement and aesthetically fit the frame of Soviet montage. Most of his audience were completely illiterate, therefore making montage the key technique for conveying ideas. The assembly of, of film and how it can be changed to create a different idea. Now we have a close-up. Let me show what he sees. Let's assume he saw a woman holding a baby in her arms. Now we cut back to his reaction to what he sees, and he smiles. Now what is he as a character? He's a kindly man. He's sympathetic. Now, let's take the middle piece of film away, the woman with the child, but leave his two pieces of film as they were. Now we'll put in uh, a piece of film of a girl in a bikini. He looks, girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? A dirty old man. He's no longer the benign gentleman who loves babies. That's, the difference. That's what film can do for you. Because of this, the aesthetics are vital when analysing Einstein's structural techniques, when using a sequence of images to put a point across, and or stimulate an intended desired response from an audience. In other words, make it simple so Russian peasants get the point. With certain scenes, Eisenstein managed to cause outrage with his audience when showing the Tsarist troops creating a massacre of the peasants. He intercut this scene with animals being slaughtered, giving the audience an opportunity to maintain loyalty for the proletariat, for the ideals of the revolution under Stalin. When I first discovered Eisenstein when I was about 17, a art student in London, um, after I came back, having seen Strike, uh, which I believe is probably the world's first cinematic masterpiece, it took 31 years after 1895 to get there, but maybe that's not so surprising. People said, Eisenstein, Eisenstein, don't you mean Einstein? So, the ignorance, I rather suspect, is still around. Eisenstein's use of the juxtaposition of images in montage also bleeds into the superimposition of images to convey and develop political ideals. To develop character attributes further, he cuts to a face of an animal before cutting to the character it corresponds to. This reverse anthropomorphism allows an audience to fully understand the character's place in the film. It also creates an aesthetic of expressionism in terms of where metaphorically that animal sits in the Russian political system. As humans, we naturally connect two images together. It is instinct to try and find meaning from two seemingly unconnected images. Eisenstein also marks out the connotations associated with organised labour. He does this by superimposing a big cog over the image of three proud workers. Symbolising here that if the workers stop, everything stops. Obviously, this type of emotion cannot be created with a single shot. He has to develop ideas with juxtaposing images to get the full backing of his viewer. In conclusion, Strike successfully represents the principal aesthetic quality associated with Soviet cinema. Despite Strike hiding in the shadows of Battleship Potemkin, Strike still manages to emotionally manipulate its audience as much as its brother.